There's a socialist coup unfolding in Canada, and we taxpayers are funding it. It's not my words. That's what a member of parliament in Canada said about two years ago, and I'm going to read you the words that she spoke way back in 2020 to show you just how correct she was and tell you what you can do about it. This is an article from the National Post. It's by Leslyn Lewis. She is a uh, member of parliament in Canada. Under this socialist revolution, she says, there is no need to confiscate your property. They can simply redistribute your wealth. This article was published originally on October 2nd, 2020, in which she said Canada is quietly going through a socialist coup. Now, I am politically homeless. I don't agree with everything that she says because she did later follow it up with something um, in 2022, taking basically a well-earned victory lap. I'm not agreeing with everything that she says, but she makes some good points about exactly what's unfolded in Canada. What's also unfolded in Australia and other Western countries, and I believe you should protect yourself against. Now, if it's your first time here, my name is Andrew Henderson, the founder of Nomad Capitalist. We are a boutique consultancy that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally reduce their taxes, diversify and protect their assets, and increase their freedom and options with things like second passports, all legally, all offshore. I'm also the host of the biggest and best offshore conference called Nomad Capitalist Live, which is open to everyone, seven or eight figures or not. And we've been receiving a lot of calls from people. We've been reworking with a lot of Canadian clients recently who are concerned that they see people's bank accounts being frozen. They see their speech being limited. You don't have to agree with everything that's gone on in Canada in the last couple of years. You don't have to be entirely against Justin Trudeau. Many are. But you can look at this and say, this does not seem like a highly democratic, fully free country anymore. The restrictions that are being imposed in Canada, not only on the side in terms of who can buy properties and freezing foreign investors out, you might agree with that or not, but the idea of you know, what Canadians can do with their money, where they can speak, what they can do. Here's what Leslin Lewis said back in October of 2020. If I had written these words just one year ago, it would have been deemed conspiratorial. But I have heard from too many Canadians of the past six months about what they have seen taking place. Ever since Justin Trudeau tried to grant himself king-like powers at the beginning of the pandemic, what we've been witnessing is in Canada is a socialist coup that we, the taxpayers, are funding. Anyone holding out hope that they were wrong had the evidence laid out plainly in last week's speech from the throne. Trudeau's throne, she means. Trudeau is perceived as an evangelist for a new type of 21st century socialism. With a $343 billion deficit, Canada has started on a perpetual debt scheme reminiscent of Argentina. Even more concerning is that COVID relief has ballooned into non-health related issues like favoring green energy initiatives, which are rarely actually green over natural resource development. The lack of transparency in government has raised concerns about unexplained inconsistencies, including adding new rules that make it difficult for smaller retail and grocery stores to operate, but allowing larger options to function, basically a form of crony capitalism that shuts down small businesses, allegedly the bedrock of a free society like Canada or the United States, where I'm from, cracking down on places of worship, but not on protesters and limitations on family gatherings. Now, I'm not trying to rehash the pandemic, but she talks about how the hidden agenda behind providing guaranteed $24,000 a year to able-bodied working-age Canadians at an average cost to the taxpayer of $464.5 billion. We've committed hundreds of millions of dollars to helping other countries while still having insufficient testing for Canadians during the pandemic. We still lack proper supports for small businesses and farmers to get through this. And we're essentially threatened that if we don't support all the unjustified spending, all government support will disappear. This is what... In my mind, I've seen, and I've been looking at this in some sense for 25 years since my father said, go where you're treated best. Look, the United States is top ranked today. It won't be forever. And indeed, it's not. And indeed, Canada's not. And indeed, Australia's not. Trudeau, she says, has clearly stated that he wants Canada to be a post-national country. He's perceived as an evangelist for a new type, as she said, of 21st century socialism, a quiet, bloodless revolution that seeks to control our lives through economic dependency. The trend that I've been watching is the government's not on your side. Now, many of us knew that they never were on your side, but there was some veneer that they were there to protect you. The last couple of years stripped that off for many people in the US, Canada, Australia, and many other countries in the West, where they thought that the price of civilization was paying high taxes and that the government would provide some support. What they have now is if you don't want to send $24,000 a year to someone who doesn't want to work, that is now highly controversial. There will be people on this very episode who will criticize and say, how dare you don't want to be selfish? Are you a greedy pig? What kind of nasty person are you? You don't want to send $24,000. Even though I live in many places where people, by and large, don't make $24,000. They work hard and they don't make $24,000. And in Canada, people just get $24,000. That was the plan, at least. 
uh, that you pay for with higher taxes. If you don't like that, then we're not going to take care of you. The narrative has been under Justin Trudeau, according to the Canadians that I talked to, if you don't tow the line, you're going to be left out in the cold. And to the idea that, hey, we can stay and fight, we can take back our country, well, you just saw. He's just renewed his power. And now he's brought in people like Jagmeet Singh, who is the guy who, surely among others, wants to bring in citizenship-based taxation to where even if you leave and you go somewhere else, you go to a place that is more free, has better tax policies, you may be at some point in the future in the same boat as Americans who simply can't escape their tax system unless they give up their passport. Everyone who said, hey, let's just fight for better government, well, things went in the wrong direction for those people in the last number of months. And so more Canadians than now ever are leaving. Leslie Lewis updated her, uh, this post, the National Post, with a, a blog on her website saying, have you ever wished you were wrong? I certainly have. But sadly, she says, I wasn't. Now, again, I'm not saying I agree with every single thing that she is saying. But what I've been telling you and what she's echoing as a member of Parliament of Canada is that the government will take from you, it will never give back. To me, that was one of the things from the pandemic. At the very beginning of the pandemic, you saw people who were stranded. And the government, people think, oh, the government's going to help them. When I left the U.S. for good, people said, well, what about the helicopters? Remember, remember in Vietnam when the helicopters came and took people away? There are no more helicopters. People who were stranded in Ukraine recently, hey, hope you can walk to the border. We're not going to help you. Now, you could argue whether it's their job to help you or there's job not to help you, but there certainly is this idea that your government is there to support you. In Canada, if you don't agree with Justin Trudeau, he will threaten you to have your passport taken away. He will threaten to freeze your bank account. And again, I'm not saying that I would agree with every single thing that's gone on, but the idea of threatening people that they can't travel, threatening people with what Australia's basically done, you can't leave, you can't come in. As a citizen, what is the purpose of citizenship? What is this civilization that you've been paying for all these years? You've been paying a bill. Some of you have been paying hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars a year, millions or even tens of millions of dollars over your lifetime. What have you gotten for it? You've got it in culture led by people like Justin Trudeau, led by people like politicians all around the Western world who are emboldened the population to say, if you don't want to give me $24,000, you're a scumbag. You don't want to cancel my student debt, you're a scumbag. I don't agree with every single conservative principle. Again, I'm politically homeless. It was part of the reason why, for me, living in the U.S., being an American, didn't work. I'm not on the ultra-Trump side. I'm not on the ultra-Bernie side. There's, there's probably parts of both that you can work at, but I am a capitalist. In the direction that the candidate is going is against capitalism. It's against personal freedom. And so the question is, how much longer do you want to stay in a society that is going in an opposite direction of where you want it to go? You wouldn't stay in a relationship like that. You wouldn't stay with someone who's just getting worse and worse and they were drinking more and more and they're becoming you know, more and more abusive. You wouldn't tolerate that. If the relationship was going in the wrong direction, you would take steps to try and correct it. But ultimately, you'd realize, I can't stop this person from going the wrong way. It saddens me, but I have to make a change. And so for me, if I'm a Canadian, and what we've been helping many Canadians do in the last couple of years is obtain second residence in countries that are more free and that are more open. We've had a number of folks going to Mexico, going to Panama, going to more far-flung places like Nicaragua, um, people who are you know, going to countries in Europe where they can work towards another high-quality passport in case they don't want to be Canadian or in case something happens in Canada in the future. So they're going to Portugal, for example. Um, they're going to places like Ireland uh, where you can, you can get residence and you can live in a relatively tax-friendly way. You can keep, you can have lower tax rates than you have in Canada in any of those countries, much lower in many cases. And so uh, Asia has not been a, as, a, as popular of a destination for many Canadians who are leaving. But Latin America, Europe, we've had some going to places like Serbia, Montenegro, uh, Georgia in Eastern Europe. Um, those are the kind of places that where Canadians have been going. They're getting second residence in those countries and they are in many cases relocating. In that relocation, they are going to enjoy substantially lower taxes. If their investments go up, their bitcoins go up, their business generates more income, their business is sold in the future, they're going to have a substantial tax advantage. There are Canadians who are saying, I can't trust all my money in TD anymore or RBC or any of the, the big banks. And so the idea has been, let's go to, if I, if I have you know, a small amount of money, Let's go to a Georgia, an Armenia, a Montenegro, uh, an Ecuador, a uh, Panama. Let's open a small bank account. If I have more money, let's go to Singapore, Switzerland, UK, um, the Bahamas, um, the Caymans, and let's move some of my money. If I have a brokerage account, 
Let's move that to an offshore brokerage account. Many of those I can still trade Canadian stocks if I want. And if I'm leaving Canada, maybe I have a different tax treatment on things like dividends. Depends on where I move. So there's a whole number of things that have to be accounted for. That's what we do here is we, we put all the holistic multi-jurisdictional pieces of the puzzle together for our clients. But Canadians are saying, I just want to get out and let me figure it out later. Let me just move some money out. Let me move my family out. Let's get residents. Let's start working towards citizenship. Um, and I'm seeing more Canadians than ever saying, we're going to spend more money to get this done. I'm seeing Canadians who have a couple million dollars who don't necessarily have the strongest case to say, let's spend $150,000 on citizenship for our family in the Caribbean that's going to come in the next six or seven months. But now they are so shocked and so frightened by the rapid turn of events. They're like, you know, we have to have a backup plan, right? I can see why historically an American would do that because then they have an insurance policy against uh, the tax policies in the U.S. that can follow them everywhere. Canadians don't yet have citizenship-based taxation, and yet they're so concerned about their assets being taken, they're so concerned that if they don't agree with the administration, who knows what can happen to them, that it's worth investing if they don't qualify for something else in citizenship by investment, for example. Uh, it's worth putting more money into sometimes not only one, but multiple residence programs. They are opening up multiple bank accounts, often what I call tunnels, where you just put a little bit of money in each one just to make sure you're covered. So these are the things that Canadians are doing right now because of what Leslie Lewis said uh, in 2020. What she said has largely come true. And the ability to fight back against that system in the normal political ways of voting has so far not worked out. This is the system that Canadians are looking at for the next couple of years. And so my advice is, whether you're Canadian or whether you're seeing this unfold in your country, take some of those same steps. Residence, citizenship, banks, brokerage, work towards greater international diversification. Move yourself physically out. There are schools everywhere, right? You can move your business. You can run your business from overseas. There's plenty of things that you can do. That's what we help people do is figure out how this stuff works. But take these steps to diversify yourself so that you're not stuck after it's too late.